Earlier today, I forced Stockfish, the world's strongest chess engine, to play an absolutely absurdly ridiculous opening against Mittens, this new bot that you can play on chess.com. And before I can show you this game, which is, I mean, it's an amazing, mind-blowing game, I just gotta say, I, I, I don't get it. I think maybe I've reached that age where all of a sudden internet culture doesn't make any sense to me, but everybody in all of the comments is saying, hey man, you gotta show us mittens, play against mittens, have Stockfish play mittens, just give us mittens, we want mittens. And I don't get it. I mean, it's like an adorable cat, that's kind of cool, but everybody's talking about it. It's one of the most hyped things right now. And it just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know what it is. But right now, if you are, don't know what I'm talking about, you can go on chess.com. They have a series of cat bots over here. You can play against Megan, who I don't think is a cat, but I, I don't know anything anymore. There's Angry Cat, Mr. Grumpers, Cat Sparoff, and of course, the final boss of all, Mittens, who is allegedly ELO rated one. So you know what? In order to make sure that we have a fair fight, and I'm going to go to Lee Chess because it's just so much easier for me to analyze over here, eh, that to make it fair, I thought I'd handicap Stockfish by forcing it to play what is potentially one of the most absurd openings that you've ever seen. So Mitten heads the white pieces and started off the game with one to e4. Now I forced Stockfish to play e5. So far, so good. Nothing weird about it. And after knight to f3, knight to f6, this is kind of the final move that will appear to be kind of normal on the surface. This is the Petrov, nothing weird about it yet. After knight takes e5, this is where I decided to play a gambit that I've actually been having a lot of fun with. And it's not d6, forcing the knight back, playing some normal Petrov. It's not knight to c6, the Stafford gambit, which is obviously a fan favorite. It's this move, pawn to d5. And this can lead to all sorts of insane stuff, especially if you let the bots take over and let them play the game out for you. Because a lot of like normal moves don't really work in this opening. But the point is, after they take back, you take with your queen. And so far, black has only sacrificed one pawn. Don't worry, we're going to dive a little bit deeper. But when you play this against humans, normally, even at this point, they're already a little bit out of book. The opening has been kind of strange. It's not very popular. So already, people are going to resort to trying to play normal moves. And you've attacked the knight, so people are going to move their knight. They're going to play d4 to protect their knight. But when computers play this position, they often come up with this move, queen to e2. And this is a very interesting move. You defend the knight, and you also set up this alignment with the black king. So obviously, a normal, sane person here would play either bishop to e7, blocking the e-file, maybe bishop to e6, and maybe black will try to determine which way they want to castle. Well, I had another idea that I wanted to test out, and I wanted to see what would happen if I forced Stockfish to play this move, bishop to c5, and you're absolutely allowing white to win your rook in the corner if they want. And Minton said, a oh, sure thing, I will help myself. Knight to g6, and after bishop to e6, getting out of the pin, developing another piece, white is able to take on h8. And what is this? We've already given up an entire rook. But after knight to c6, you can very clearly notice that black is already fully developed. Now, you had to sacrifice an entire rook to do it, which is insane and probably doesn't work, but I'll let the computers figure out what is going on. And this is the position that I wanted to test. From here on out, I'm going to let Stockfish make all of the moves, but... It's actually kind of a crazy thing, and there is probably some thin line that white can walk to get a good position. White's probably winning. I don't know. You're down a rook. Uh, but it's not so easy, and it's not so obvious right off the bat. And this is what I wanted to test. So after knight to c3, a developing move with a tempo makes a lot of sense, black plays queen to f5. And the queen is actually really well placed here, because in addition to just getting ready to castle... From f5, we now have the very strong threat of knight to d4, and this is what black is playing for in this opening. Knight to d4, it would attack the queen, but it would also threaten to take on c2. The queen here is doing a good job uh, of making knight to d4 an even stronger move. So white has to come up with something, and already this is things get wacky fast. White has to deal with the threat of knight to d4 and plays knight to e1, a retreating move. And the idea is... After black plays knight to d4, it looks like you've kind of gotten yourself into a lot of trouble because you're attacking the queen and the c pawn. What is going on here? Well, white's idea was to counterattack the queen 
with knight to e3. <laughs> and now if you take the queens, we're just swapping queens. That's got to be good for white. White's up a ton of material. And if you decide to take on c2 now, sure, you win a pawn, but you're already down so much material that that doesn't make any sense. So black needs to move the queen away, all right? Already kind of a weird way of continuing. The white queen is under attack, so it pops back to d1. And here, I think I would expect you would just castle, you would move on. But Black played here something that is quite remarkable, a very non-human move, or at least something that I don't think would be very intuitive to most people. I'm assuming you see this position and you want to castle, like, that's the last thing, castling attacks the knight, it all seems great, but Black plays this move, bishop to g4, and it's so counterintuitive because you're allowing the knight to take the bishop, and it kind of feels like the knight is posted up in kind of a weird, awkward square, and you're letting the knight get out of the way and take the bishop, but that's not what happened in the game. What happened in the game is a crazy move that you're probably not going to be able to predict either, but if you take this bishop, the problem is we take back with the knight, of course not with the queen, we're not going to trade queens, and black actually has a very strong attack because the knight is well placed here. It's coordinating with this bishop on the f2 square, so potentially we're already threatening to take on f2, some sort of sacrifice with the knight, but also just like slow plans like castling and rook to e8 might also be very dangerous and very hard to stop, and for that reason, the bishop actually was not taken. Now what Mittens came up with was yet another <laughs> counterattack. So your queen is under attack, you figured you'd get out of the attack, right? Knight takes f7. What is this move? Uh, another kind of weird, strange shot, ignoring that the queens are attacked, because white has now counterattacked the queen on g5. So potentially, you're just going to move your queen away. And the other thing is, if we take the knight now, and obviously this knight is going to disappear at some point, it gives white the chance to throw this check in and maybe set up a more reasonable defense against the black attack. And so for that reason, Stockfish doesn't even take the knight. <laughs> Stockfish leaves the knight where it is and plays queen to f4. Just saying, look, your queen is still under attack, Still taking this doesn't make any sense because I'm just going to take back and now it's even stronger because we're just lined up on F2 and you don't have any ways of really using your queen. She can't go here. She can't go here because this knight on D4 is just so strong. Uh, and you're just saying like, okay, I just kind of, I don't want to allow any of your threats. I continue to make my threat on your queen. Also, you can't use your bishop. We just simply take it. I mean, it's, it's just kind of weird. It's crushing. So white has to play this move F3. And after black's next move, you can already kind of tell that black is going to be crashing through. Black is just going to all of a sudden just be sort of slaughtering white on the king side because black plays knight takes f3. Of course, you shatter him. And after this recapture, you take back on f3. And all of a sudden, white has a lot of issues. White is going to be giving back some of the material. So bishop to e2. Even here, I was a little bit surprised that black didn't take the time to throw this check in. But what's kind of funny is that you can transpose. In the game, uh, Stockfish just took the rook. If you start with this check, you actually get to this position, <laughs> where after this recapture, uh, white was playing d4. But to be a little bit more efficient, what is the point of preventing the opponent from even castling? There's no need, because after you take this rook and they play d4, you can just take on h2, getting to that exact same position. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, queen takes h2. Uh, we kind of skipped over that one a little bit fast. But look, the bishop is hanging. The knight is still hanging. What the heck is going on? But all of a sudden, there are also avenues now for checks along this diagonal. And taking the bishop might even open up the d file, which could be kind of messy. So the computer plays c3. And look, if you decide that you want to take this bishop, there's actually a wild line here because black can play queen to h4 and the king needs to make a decision. And there's two ways to go. Both of them lead to pretty amazing, uh, I don't know if they're checkmates, but you're at least going to be winning a queen in either line. If the king decides to go to d2, this is maybe the easier one to figure out once you see knight to e4. If you see this, look, your king can't go back. Knight is restricting you. You have to go up. You're at least running into a fork, okay? So this is just straight out. But what if you go here? Well, now things get a little bit clever because here again, you play knight to e4. And if the queen, for example, goes to e1, there is a tactic. Uh, and it's actually a very clever move that you can play that I think a lot of people would potentially struggle with. But you can pause your video if you want to try to solve it. Here's your little challenge <laughs> for this video. 
bishop to g2, putting the bishop where two pieces can potentially take it. And you understand that the idea is we're trying to remove a defender so that we can potentially win your queen, but certainly this knight should be able to take it. Well, no, you're actually just simply getting checkmated. So no matter what you do, <laughs> you're actually running uh, into a lot of trouble after this bishop to g2 move. I mean, this stuff is just, it's crazy, it's wild. So instead, after the bishop took on h1, we got d4. Queen takes h2, and you can't take the bishop due to all of the threats, so white plays c3, and potentially this way we'll be able to get the queen out, uh, might be able to just kind of have a more sensible defense. Well, now black decides to take on f7, now is the moment, and by taking now, you're also getting ready to bring the rook over to the e-file, so certainly white could consider playing bishop to c4, black will need to go back, and then the rook will begin to enter into the game, but instead, she came up with knight to g4, which I guess is some sort of way of simplifying, which is actually kind of frustrating because white now just kind of accepts that they're worse and they go into like kind of a bad end game. So that's what sort of happens. After the queen check, king moves away, knight takes g4, bishop takes g4, and rook to e8. And it's still looking very, very good for black at this moment. Black is a pawn up. Uh, still, this thing is never really able to ever be captured. At whatever moment this is captured, there's always stuff going on on the D file. So thus far, that's never really been a major threat. Uh, Mittens throws in a little bit of a check. G6 is what was played. The bishop hops back to E2. And here I think I actually forced Stockfish to not move this bishop away just to see if I could get away with it. I think uh, bishop to D6 is probably a very reasonable move. But I made it play bishop to E4 just to see, just to have a little bit of a laugh, just to see if I, Mittens would dare to take this, which actually runs into a mate in six. Uh, so she dared not. It goes something like this. Uh, then you can go either way, but let's just say you head this way, for example, you're going to be running into uh, a very typical mating attack. If you decide to run this other way, let's just have a little bit more fun. Maybe this is the more realistic way. The mate goes something like this, where there should be some sort of check, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's, it's checkmate. It's very clearly checkmate. Uh, da, 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 da. Still can't take the bishop. So I thought that it would be kind of fun to leave it hanging there, if I can get back to where I was. Uh, and I forced it to play bishop to e4, and after that, white continued to try to trade. Now I gave this check. I think, again, I was looking for ways to try to keep this material on the board. I think this is another move. I forced I forced Stockfish to keep the queens on the board out of artistic integrity, but I think this is the last move that I forced it to play, because after some series of captures, we just get to some endgame where black is up two pawns. So for computers, this is over, the game is over, but I think we should take a look just to kind of understand the technique. And the problem for white at this moment is that the black queen is preventing this rook from being able to get into the game. But now, after b4, maybe we're able to get this bishop out, maybe we can finally get the rook into the game. So rook to e1 shuts that idea down, and white is just kind of smushed and trapped in here. Uh, she tries to bring the queen in a little bit closer, and now... Queen to f1. The threat is to play rook to e2, which would be just winning on the spot, so the queen needs to move somewhere, and now black comes up with a very nice way of forcing white to weaken themselves. And this is kind of when you have this overpowering position. This is a very good way to think of it. How can you just force the opponent to make their position even worse? Well, it starts with this check, and after king to b3, queen to f7, forcing white to really start moving one of these pawns forward. So white plays pawn to d5, after which we do have a way to exploit the uh, position of the queen. The queen is the one that's defending d5, so bishop to e7 makes this queen move away. And if you kind of take a look around, there's nowhere where you can really go that you'd be able to protect that. Uh, you're not able to go here either. All of the squares where the queen could protect it are off limits, so the queen pops up to g4. However, I was not happy to see this because now after this trade, white's idea was to accept that they're worse and force the queens off. So at this moment, okay, fine, you get the queens off, that's the deal, but all of a sudden, black is up two pawns, and this should just be a winning endgame. Also, just to remind you, you're still a little bit pinned in there, so just kind of get wrecked. Not only are you down material, you also just have a horrible position, and your bishop's boxed in, and at some moment, I just begin running these pawns over. The game went uh, king d3, king f7, bishop b2, king e6. The king begins to run in, the pawns begin to march, and the ending actually was quite nice. Uh, we get to some position where, okay, 
It's just about marching the pawns. Whenever the pawns can go forward, you do. And then uh, G2. This was a very nice move. Black is just setting up a mating net. All you really need to do now is run the king into F3, which is exactly what happens. Um, here, we move the bishop away. And then bishop to H4, just letting you take this thing to slow you down. Nah, king to F3. Let me just protect this pawn so that now there's all sorts of mating threats. And after the bishop went here, you can take it with a bishop. You can take it with a king. Stockfish decides to take with the king. Here, you can mate with a bishop or you can mate with a pawn. It decided to mate with a pawn, and that's how Stockfish took down mittens. Make sure you subscribe.